Serious, what is the scariest thing you encountered in a cave? Found an entire chamber filled with cow bones and plenty of other various animal bones. Had to crawl to get into it. Never crawled so fast as I did to get out. Having been in many caves and seen bats, spiders and evidence of other animals, the scariest things are the infinite spots you can get stuck in, and the prospect of shifting stone. If you're in there for long with those low light conditions your eyes start to see the walls sliding and you'll reach up to try to hold them up even though if they were really falling they would crush you without a second thought. You're defenseless and powerless in the dark with only your wits and will to get back to the world. God it's exhilarating. Me and a friend were messing around in the canyon right next to town. We were hiking up the side when we saw a decent sized opening and climbed in. It was rather spacious and looked like a cool place to hide out since it is practically hidden from the trail. We noticed there was another chamber in the back, and crawled in deeper. There was a sleeping bag and some belongings. We realized we trespassed into someone's home. Good thing they weren't there when we showed up, that would have gone from unsettling to absolutely terrifying. I haven't really been in many caves but the scariest thing I've seen was when I reached up onto a ledge to pull myself out of a hole I slid and my finger landed right next to this thing that looked like a some kind of grasshopper or earwig or something and it was huge, about half the length of my hand, causing me to lose my grip and fall. As I got back up I then saw that the wall I was clinging onto when trying to get out of the hole was covered in them and when looking at my clothes you could see a whole bunch of stains for me unknowingly crushing some. I was visiting New Zealand, we are from Australia, with family when I was 11. We had hired a camper van and were traveling all over without a real set plan, just stopping wherever looked good. After about two weeks of this my mum and stepdad got sick of us kids so they told us to go play on the beach for a bit. We were parked at the top of these cliffs so it meant we had to climb down lots of stairs to reach a little sandy bay area at the bottom. We didn't notice the cave entrance until we got to the beach and decided to go play in there. There was sand on the cave floor so we were making sand castles and just fucking around in there. It was pretty small, like the size of a bedroom, but there was a crack that led into a deeper cave on the far wall. As children we probably could have crawled through but for whatever reason decided not to. Anyway my sister and stepsister decided to go get some shells and stuff to decorate our sand castles so they went back out onto the beach and left me in there by myself. After a few minutes I started to feel frozen fear for no logical reason it just swept over me. I looked up and in the smaller crack I saw a ghostly face shaking back and forth. It wasn't defined like solid matter but wasn't misty either. More like I just couldn't focus on the edges. Its mouth and eyes were wide. I remember it very vividly. I froze long enough to get a really good look and then kinda snapped put of it and got the fuck out of there. My sisters were standing a ways off looking worried and told me they had felt like they shouldn't go back in the cave. We all ran as fast as we could back up the stairs and got halfway up to a small platform before we stopped to look back. The face could now be seen in the big main cave entrance. I said can you see that my? My stepsister just turned to me and made her mouth and eyes wide and shook her head back and forth slowly and then said it was doing that. So yeah pretty fucking creepy I'd say. It is the moment I realized death is not the end. I know that for sure. Complete and utter darkness. We went on a cave tour in Tian and were in the last tour group of the day. There was so many of us that the person running the desk decided to split the group in two, so he sent half down to meet the guide and get on their way and then he was going to lead the other half once they had cleared the entrance tunnel. I guess he didn't explain this to the guide in the first group so we were halfway through the tour when suddenly all the lights cut out. The first group had got back and the guide thinking his group was the last shut everything down for the night. Our guide had a flashlight but it really only helped him and wasn't enough for all of us to walk out by. He tried radioing but didn't get any response so we all had to hang out in the middle of a cave while he took the only light source back to the entrance to get the lights back on. After only a couple minutes that amount of sheer darkness really starts to mess with your head. I would see things moving in front of me that couldn't possibly be there, it was like my brain was just desperately trying to fill in the unknown space. We ended up moving against a wall to have something physical to touch and sang songs with our eyes closed to stay calm. Thankfully it was only about 15-20 minutes and the guide was able to get the lights back on for us to exit. He offered to finish the tour but we were all ready to get out of there ASAP. This isn't a cave, but rather a deep creek ravine. It had trees surrounding it so it was dark and looked like a cave. But anyway, 
In high school some friends and I would often cruise the back roads of our small town and break into abandoned house and use our video camera to capture ghosts videos. One night we drove by a very deep ravine that was dried up and the ground was covered in leaves. I said we should check it out and see who would go furthest into the ravine. Three of us went in and the other three stayed behind saying it was way too scary to check out. While we were walking we saw an empty gallon jug, then came across a piece of blue clothing, then some other trash. We didn't have the flashlight on to add to the effect we just turned it on every now and then to see things better. The moon was full but it was very hard to see because of all the tree coverage. Suddenly a cold chill ran down my back and I felt like we weren't alone. I froze, my friends stopped immediately with me. I know they felt what I felt. We could hear a rush of branches breaking and leaves crunching. It was all around us at the top of the ravine. My friend shined his light and we could see people rushing all around us. We turned around and ran the way we came. Just into darkness. I'm so amazed none of us fell. We got to the car and started pounding on it we jumped in and I got into the driver's seat and we floored it out of there. We were deep in the woods about 20 miles from town but rushed home and all of us talking at once. We have been warned before by authorities to stay out of the woods, that terrible things happen there. But we didn't listen. Things could have ended much differently for us. We are lucky we made it back home. I love exploring caves and abandoned buildings. By far the creepiest thing I've ever encountered in either, was the time I stumbled upon a group of homeless drug addicts. I was in a park with a secret cave maybe 35 minutes from civilization. I did not expect people to be there, but I've also encountered people in old mine towns, much further from the beaten path. There's tons of caves in my state. I heard about one that wasn't too far from where I work, and a friend of mine took me. We had to park and hike out. We just wanted to look around and maybe smoke some weed. We found the entrance, which was basically a sinkhole with an opening in the bottom. There was some trash scattered around, but we didn't think much of it. We squeezed inside. It wasn't very big. There was a large open area, big enough for both us to stand, but we were pretty much face to face. Little tunnels branched off in three directions. They were pretty narrow, and I didn't quite have the nerve to pick one to squeeze myself through. We sat down next to the opening, and we prepared a joint. We sat there for a minute, listening to a strange sound. We couldn't tell if it was a voice, or maybe water moving somewhere deeper in the cave. We decided it was water. While we smoked our joint, less than six feet inside of the cave, we heard what we thought were rocks settling. Suddenly, the distinct sound of people shuffling toward us came from the widest corridor that branched off from the opening. We scrambled to hide our joint and get out of there. While I was awkwardly pulling myself through the opening, a wild woman with marks all over her face, and a starving looking dude grabbed at my legs and my backpack. They were growling and screaming incoherently. After I pulled myself all the way out of the hole, and took off running, they yelled I'll kill you. Over and over, until we couldn't hear them anymore. We were pretty stoked when we got back to the car. Years after visiting the cave, I found out it is one of the only uranium deposits in New Zealand. There were, apparently, stories amongst Maori that pregnant women could not sleep in the cave, as it was inhabited by a tinifa, a sort of Maori mythological monster, and this would kill the unborn child. I desperately want to go back to that cave with a Geiger counter and see if it actually is dangerous. Certainly scared me when I found out though. I was in a cave once, and it was downright freezing at the bottom. In the middle of a summer day in central Oregon. There was legitimate snow at one corner of the cave. Which is weird, seeing how the area around it was known for the lava flows and such. I could have swore I saw something in that cave that resembled a freak of nature, and I don't think it noticed me. On the north end of Boracay in the Philippines is a really beautiful cage. You climb down guano-filled boulders probably a hundred feet or so. Even though the entrance to the cave is large, light at the bottom fades fast. If you were to shine a flashlight at the top of the cave you would see hundreds of giant Filipino bats. Big bats. If you were to shine the light at the bottom of the rocks you would see piles of purple and blue snakes. Sea crates. These are dangerous snakes and they say if you got bit you would only have 30 or so minutes to make it. It's about a 20 minute climb up the boulder mound and out into the jungle. But the most beautiful and most terrifying thing about the cave was the water. At the far end of the cave lays an island surrounded by crystal blue ocean that illuminates everything around it. If you're dumb or brave enough, you would jump in that water and find there are some tunnels. If you're really dumb or brave you would explore those tunnels. If you're lucky it would be low enough tide and you would be okay or it would be high enough tide and you wouldn't begin. 
But if you're unlucky and you jump in and then find yourself in an underwater cave tunnel with waves being funneled through the rocks as the tide comes in you might have a panic attack. I had a panic attack as I was waiting for my fellow explorers to climb through an eroded vertical tunnel that leads back into the main room of the cave, surrounded by hissing sea crates of course. My head was pushing up against the sharp ceiling of the cave as the water was filling it up. I legitimately freaked and climbed through that fucking hole in the ceiling like my life depended on it. The worst part of it though was on our way back to the town, our jipney hit a stray dog. It walked off with a limp. We definitely broke its leg. That put a really damp taste on an otherwise really spectacular experience in the cave, 